Yeah, hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough. I'm starting over here at the title screen because I'd like to show the 100% it's save file. Yes, 201 out of 201. Now, this part, as I said, it was going to be a bunch of extras and stuff and stuff. So let's go back to the uh, Awakening Wood because there's stuff for us to see there. So, um, after day 10, a ton of pellet posies start blooming, I guess you could say, growing and blooming, and as a result of that, you can get a ton of Pikmin from this. Uh, so, uh, mm, uh, mm, eh, ah, it doesn't look like they've started yet, but that's okay. I'm just gonna get a small squad of Pikmin here and go over to another side of this place to show you something else while I wait for them to bloom, and hopefully I'll be able to do stuff without, uh, having to worry about battling. <laughs> I'm taking blues here, just be- Hey, hey, you are not going to dis- Ah! They dismantled my bridge! I was gonna say, they, they are not going to dismantle my bridge, but they dismantled my bridge! Yeah, that's the something that Shearwigs can do. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose I could throw Pikmin across and have them battle things to their heart's content. Or, uh, they can build a bridge too, I suppose. That, that kind of works. No, 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 stop it, stop it, stop it. Well, I, I suppose once they build a bridge, it'll be it'll be okay, because I can just, like, start... Okay, they already killed him already. Doesn't matter, no. <laughs> it, it worked out just fine. We didn't lose anything. Well, I didn't lose anything. Ah, uh, wait, hold on. Okay, there we go. <laughs> what I want to do is go around here and hopefully avoid... Ah, this one too! <laughs> well, let's see if we can do this without alerting the Wallywogs of our presence of, wait, 50 out of 60. Where did I... Okay, some are stuck somewhere. Well, whatever, we're okay. Just as long as we can get across here, because there's something that... Not you. I was gonna say, there's something that I didn't show over here before, and it... There it is! Iridescent Glint Beetle appears over here. Uh, yeah! 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 You carry a lot of stuff there, Goldie. Yeah, I'm going to name you Goldie Hawn. Oh, I went underground. Oh, shoot! That blue's a goner. Because <laughs> I'm not going to bother saving it at this moment, because I'm kind of kind of busy with stuff. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't think that uh, uh, Glint Beetle is going to pop back in and around here. And Hey, uh, what are you doing there? <laughs> How did you get all the way from there to over there so quickly? I'm kind of... Oh, see, that's where you guys... Ah, well, that explains a lot. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna let him go back to sleep. And for that one loss, we got five blues. Uh, those those posies still... Oh, I guess they kind of... Mm, yeah, yeah, they, they all, yeah, yeah, there we go. They, they all spawn there. That's good. All right, now, as you can tell, tons of posies are here to regain the Pikmin that you've lost on other days or just want to breed up Pikmin uh, in general. So that's pretty nice. Um, so, yeah, I'm over here in these potted plants. There should be another glint beetle, not a regular beetle, but an actual golden, you know, shiny, beautiful golden hawn beetle. Uh, it's perhaps, I don't know, maybe it's... Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that there is one around here somewhere. Maybe only one appears on uh, um, each particular day that, uh, um, like, you go into this area and one appears at the other side and then one appears over here. Well, this might be the, uh, the day that it doesn't appear over here, so yeah. Um, anyway, I gotta gather out the Pikmin, and then I will, uh, uh, go to Sunset and then check this on another day and see if one appears here. Sound good? Good. Oh, here's where I lost the 10. They're under the bridge. Because they were still stuck there after the whole battle with the Shear Grubs. And the other two were hanging out here plucking grass. Well, one of the two were. <laughs> Email! I think I may have messed up, darling. I lost a small fortune buying lottery tickets. It was all a nightmare. I'm afraid we're going to have to live lean for a while. <laughs> Alright, so after going to Sunset, I'll probably um, cut over to each time I get mail just to show you what I've got. Um, 
Anyway, we are going back into the Awakening Wood. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I was kind of mashing buttons there. I can't hit the B button. Yeah, you can kind of cancel it out. Come on, go, 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 go. I need to uh, go to Sunset all the way to Day 30, actually, uh, to get to the next thing that I want to start showing. So we're going to see a lot of emails this part. <laughs> and those emails, you don't want to miss them. They're fun. There's a lot of them that you can get too, so uh, when you're playing the game yourself, you might have an entirely different sort of setup in emails than I got based off of what you've got and whatnot. Alright, let's see here. Is there going to be a glint beetle there? It doesn't appear to be. Hmm. Well, I'm sure that one can appear there though. So maybe it's only from certain days to certain days or something like that. Or maybe the other one over there on the other side is back already. Uh, I guess I could go see, but I'll leave my Pikmin here just to keep them safe, I guess, with a captain. Nope, the Glint Beetle isn't back over here. Interesting. Perhaps I spawn the Glint Beetle by mistake and it just doesn't come back after you spawn it once? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I should probably go to Sunset and uh, check my email again. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> and now, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Same numbers, same numbers. Hi, Papa. I'm so happy. Mama's back to normal. I'm not sure what the reason is. Love, maybe? Anyway, hurry up and come home. Don't forget to bring souvenirs. Not there on this day either. Ah, more mail. <laughs> Daddy, Mama has changed again. She's become nice like she used to be. She said it's okay if I don't study. Is it really okay if I don't? Because if I is it really okay if I don't become a perfect proper lady? Really? I don't know. <laughs> Nah, that sounds fine to me. <laughs> All the treasures on the list have been found! I see you're in a new light, honey. Hakatate Freight is open for business once again. Get right back to work tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna go look for that glint beetle again because it wasn't here again today! Ah! Email, oh my goodness! Louie, I heard that you completed your task. Congratulations! My little Louie has become an extraordinary man. How about visiting your dad? I've got bug juice. <laughs> No beetle there yesterday, by the way. However, I have a theory. Maybe I have to slam the ground with purples to get it to come out. <laughs> Let's just see here. Eh, nope. Doesn't look like it. After I record what I thought was the entirety of this part, I decided to do some scouring to see for sure if I did indeed miss the opportunity to get that other glint beetle's treasures. Well, I didn't. It was this pot! that contained it, not the other ones. <laughs> so yeah, there we go, there is the second glint beetle, and aw, oh, it ran out of treasure already. That's too bad. Oh, I think two droplets were on top of each other there. <laughs> More mail! Uh-oh. Hakate e e e number 255. Not just songs, songs of love! Rock out to Pick Pick's greatest hits and get sappy! HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www.pikmin.com dot. I'm pretty sure that URL won't work because of extra dot at the end. Mail, mail, mail! Dad, today I'm writing on behalf of Bulby. Mom and I completely forgot to feed him. He got skinny, but he's been eating a lot of Pikmin carrots, so he'll be okay. What, do they have a pet Bulborb or something? Or maybe a pet Bulbman? Who knows? Who knows? Another piece of mail? No way! Dad, our dog, Bulby. Ah, so it's a dog. Has been acting like a pig. He ate all of our carrots. Have you really seen creatures on that planet that look just like Bulby? Well, no, I haven't seen any doggies. But I do know things that can eat. Oh boy, can they eat! Oh, I love you! Don't keep me waiting any longer! Please come home! I've made a ton of your favorite soup, and it's here waiting for you! P.S. Bring souvenirs. <laughs> I think she has more on the mind than just her love. What's in today's mailbox of doom? I love huh. yeah. huh. 
She's spamming it. I think she's getting obsessive. Man, so many jump cuts today. What? Again? Have I ran out of emails? Oh no. Oh no. Or maybe she really is getting obsessive. This is not good. Something tells me I should go into hiding. Let's never go back to her again. Alright, <laughs> I have reached day 30. And on day 30, stuff changes at the perplexing pool. So let's go in there. Namely, that a bunch more enemies appear here. Harder enemies than what we're used to actually in typical sorts of areas. So anyway, let's get out yellows. Not too many yellows. You'll see why in just a few seconds. Let's just uh, run through here and... Okay, where is it? Where is it? You can't fool me. I know you exist around these parts. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, unless it's after day 30 and it's not on day 30 that could very well be hmm 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 okay let's come back to you later <laughs> I'm finding out all sorts of stuff this part aren't I <laughs> alright so I'll be back there on day 32 just to make sure that the enemies uh, pop in and yeah oh boy here we go oh god no <laughs> I'll have to block that email address. My, my inbox is full of the same message. Anyway, let's go over to the Wistful Wild, because on day 31, and on... I, I should say, on day 31, and every 30 days after that, so the 31, 61, 91, etc., 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 you will find that there is something... That has spawned. It's a very rare enemy that doesn't even appear in the Piccolopedia. Yeah, that's something special. <laughs> and uh, what we're going to do here is look at the spots that it could potentially appear at. There's two spots that it can appear, so let's work our way over there and hope that we don't have to battle stuff along the way, like uh, perhaps uh, Craw Mat. Uh-oh. 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 Yeah, oh, zoinks! <laughs> Alright, let's just avoid it. Avoid everything. Okay, we're good. Oh, wait, wasn't there a straggler behind? Okay, they're good. We're safe! Everything is peachy keen. Now, uh, over here... Oh, keep going, keep going. Everyone? Everyone here? Okay, we're good. <laughs> Hopefully that... Uh, oh, no, no, not you guys either! So many enemies have respawned because so many days have passed since we've been here. Even though it's been kind of one day. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna avoid you. I'm going up here first because it's easier to go here first, check, and then to the other area that they could potentially be. Uh, because this is so far out of the way. Ah, they're here! Look at those little bugs roaming around. See those? They are so hyper, so happy, so, so rare that some people don't even know they're here. They're known as Ujadani. It's spelled U-J-A-D-A-N-I. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It's, see these little guys? They're poisonous, so they can kill Pikmin. But uh, they aren't, like, stunned in the, the typical way. Uh, uh, I should say, they aren't killed... I didn't mean to get a spray, but uh, you can get a ton of sprays from these suckers and stop, stop, no, nope. it's very rare that they do kill Pikmin though, even though I'm kind of losing Pikmin somehow. <laughs> um, there's a maximum of 30 sprays and, I should say, blobs that can be on screen at one time. Uh, so it's like, if you're this far into the game, or I should say if you've taken this long into the game, this is one of the greatest ways to get sprays. Um, if you want to maximize the sprays that you can possibly get, what you want to do is uh, kill off some of them and, you know, suck up the sprays like this. Uh, kill off some of them, suck up the sprays like this. And you can do this with Leaf Pikmin as well. 
uh, so that you can actually take uh, the gold, you know, regular blobs, you know, yellow regular blobs of nectar uh, with the Pikmin, just like one Pikmin at a time to uh, get as many blobs as you could possibly can in one day. And as a result of this, you can farm probably like 20, 30 sprays in a single day. It's ridiculous just how much of an advantage the uh, Ujadanis give you as a result of this. And, uh, oh yeah, the Withering Blowhog can also help you get uh, your sprays maximized as well, because, you know, you can have the Withering Blowhogs um, deflower Pikmin and whatnot. So, yeah, it's pretty nice uh, what you can get out of this. Um, the other spot that... It's going to be hard to get past them, isn't there? <laughs> the other spot that they can potentially appear at is um over somewhere oh, there they are oh yeah <laughs> sweet wipe them out yes <laughs> and as you see they don't attack very frequently so that's why they're not like super dangerous to pikmin or anything like that but uh, their main danger is that you're sucking up sprays <laughs> while uh pikmin is poisoned and you can't like uh, pull them back or anything like that so yeah, this is by far the best way to get sprays in the game, but you're not going to beat any high score records. I should, I should say any speedrun records because you have to be here at the earliest, day 31. And wait, is that a Gatling Grunt guy here? Oh god, where is it? Oh, it's over there. Hopefully he doesn't shoot over the wall when I'm harvesting these sprays, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get that one that's up on that ledge there. Oh yeah, and you know, if you do the double uh, spray glitch, you know, getting two sprays for the price of one via the... Oh, those two sprays are overlapping perfectly! But yeah, if you get two, uh, two sprays for the price of one by, you know, multiplying the sprays, by like doing the glitch trick thing, whatever you want to call it, you can get even more sprays out of that, so it's ridiculous just how much you can get uh, from this. But anyway, let's go over to the sunset now and head back over to the perplexing pool to see what is up over there that wasn't up there before. By the way, um, the Wistful Wild may very well be um, the final trial and impact site from the first Pikmin game. Just thought I would give you a little potential trivia tidbit of that, but the thing about it is uh, it might not be at the same time because it's not where they were in the original game. See, Pikmin 2 takes place around the same place that Pikmin 1 did. The Perplexing Pool is basically the distant spring um, from Pikmin 1. Oh god. <laughs> so, yeah, um, the areas in Pikmin 2 are either the same areas, but slightly different because of the how, how the terrain changed and whatnot, or they have slight references to um, said uh, areas in Pikmin 1. Uh, I, like some people think the Ho Forest of Hope is the um, uh, snowy area, but that it just doesn't seem to be at the same area. And yeah, so it might not be... It's, it's kind of kind of hard to say if these really are, are all the same areas as they were in Pikmin 1 or not. But anyway, I'm going to look around here and see if we can get... Because it's day, day 32. The en new enemy should be here by now. There it is! Yeah, I thought it was over by this circle. So, as you can see, um, Beady Longlegs here uh, pops in after... I'm, I, I, I'm, I would like to say after day 30, but, you know, I, I'm pretty sure it's... It's on day 30, I'm... Could be po I mean, I, I thought I was positive about that, but, eh, well, I thought I was positive about that glint beetle being up, uh, available at all times as well, so, what do I know? <laughs> Alright, there we go, we win. <laughs> Alright, we should also probably take a look-see around here to see uh, what has changed enemy-wise as well, so let's just leave our squad behind here, to take a bunch of those pellets back and see what other enemies might have appeared around this place that weren't, wasn't here before. You know, just by giving them a, <clears throat> a quick run through here to see here. Uh, you guys were here before, so that's not really anything special. Uh, you were here before, not special. <laughs> uh, wait, was that a Gatling Groink over there on the other side? I, it might have been. 
Uh, you two were here before. Wait, you guys... You guys weren't this small before, were you? Huh. Or maybe you grow as the days go on, I don't know. Uh, Withering Blowhog, you weren't here before. At least not this far away from the spot. Ah, Bull Bear, you're wandering around the area. Can you come up here? Now, oh, you can actually come up here. That's, that's kind of cheating, because your babies can't do that. <laughs> You'd leave your babies behind if you did that. Um, let's see what else we got around these parts. Hmm. But yeah, as you can tell, this is definitely the perplexing pool based off of these uh, stumpy layouts. But there's some changes to the land, so you have to get... Wow, you can go over all the walls, can't you? <laughs> so there's you have to get through this place differently than you did um, in the distant spring. So yeah, that's why it's been named differently. And there's a little mention of that somewhere in the game that uh, Alomar says it, uh, something about the last time he was here or something like that. And here's also the uh, uh, slightly modified uh, ship part area, which was way up over here. Uh, yeah, but over here in the original, uh, can I get out of here if I, yeah, I thought so, because there's a slope here, but yeah, in the original game, there wasn't water here, so it's a little bit more treacherous to get yellows up through here, uh, so if yellows get in there, they're pretty much done, <laughs> but otherwise, uh, they just, uh, other types just walk out of that slope right there, so there's no, like, uh, geyser to propel you or Pikmin out of the place, and of course, there's also berry plants here now and whatnot. Um, let's see, what else is there that wasn't here before? You were there before, that's for certain, because I had to get a treasure out of you. Now, I'm going to take uh, this way around here, I suppose, because I'm pretty sure I've seen um, all that might pop up along those sides there. You three were there. Uh, hmm, I don't think you were here before, so I guess yellow wallywogs can increase... Uh, yeah, that, that appears to be it, because these Wallywogs really aren't an, all that special being here. So, yeah, maybe, well, maybe the enemies that appear here aren't much tougher than I thought they were. Uh, maybe just my amateurish, or should say beginnerish nature when I first played through the game that uh, made me remember that I, I was really sucking versus those sorts of enemies. <laughs> So yeah, there we go. Now, what I'm going to be doing here is plopping everyone back in there and... Wait, there's someone out on the field? Where is there one on the field? Seriously? Why, why, why do I always have issues keeping track of where Pikmin are going? There's something fishy about this too, because I had all the Pikmin that I had around here carry stuff back to the bay, so they should have all been underneath the onion. Oh wait, hold! It's in the party, what? What? Why didn't you go back in? I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. I'm out of here. <laughs> Alright, anyway, I'm gonna take a look at our treasure hoard as well as the Piclopedia here. Because this is the game's extras after all. I'll probably start out with the Piclopedia, because that's... Uh, well, I was going to say it's probably the most interesting of the two, but there's some interesting uh, stuff to check out in the Treasure Hoard as well. Because there's different series of items, and oh god! <laughs> this is getting very, very creepy. Huh. I, I think I should give her just something, just so she stops messing with me. Alright, anyway, Piclopedia, L button. So here we go. Ooh, it's all filled up, including bosses. Oh yeah, oh, Titan Weevil has no weapons. I'm so sad. So yeah, everything and everyone is here. At least it should be, because I touched uh, all the plants that you need to touch here. Like you see fig warts here. I told you that you should be touching all the plants along the way, just to make sure they appear in this place. Um, so yeah, dandelions, uh, oh wait, actually, uh, you can also check the notes of things. I'm, I'm definitely not going to go through all of these, because there is a tremendous amount of dialogue to go through here, but I will go through some of them. Uh, by the way, Louis' notes there, I don't know why they appeared early on in the game, come to think of it now, because they're only supposed to appear once you get Louis, um, rescued from the main story, and yeah... 
So I'm guessing that once you unlock Louis's notes, you will unlock them for all save files regardless of completion permanently on the SD card until you clear it out and whatnot. Uh, well, let's just check some stuff. The this titillating ingredient tastes impossibly fresh, but you must cook it immediately after picking. If you don't, it'll go bad within minutes. So basically, um, Louis's notes are food, and Olimar's notes are scientific. Figwort. Uh, I can't pronounce that. Figwort family. This plant offers an excellent example of a non-native species introduced into the ecosystem by some unknown method. Upon introduction, it quickly established a foothold and adapted to the new habitat. Its plant's distinct flowers usually exhibit a stunning blue color in early spring, but recent field work has recorded specimens displaying a deep red hue. Elizabeth, as you can tell, this is lengthy, and there's a lot of these little bits of dialogue in the game like this. They are fun to read through, but there's so many of them, it would just be preposterous for me to make a video um, going through so, so many of these. So, I'm going to leave them up for you to read if you're interested in reading them. But anyway, I'm going to go up back up to the top and uh, start reading through some of my favorites here. Plump specimens are best fit roasted whole. Stuffed with lime and a slab of bacon. Based frequently to ensure a magnificently moist hunch. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you wake up critters... I mean, you can wake up critters by throwing pick pick carrots at them with the A button. You can also freeze them by pressing the Z button and you'll get the effect of, yeah, the ultra bitter spray. And you can also pan the camera around with C button as uh, well as, I should say, pan the angle around with the C stick. Why did I say C button? I don't know. And also look around here with the control stick like so. And that's about it that you can do in the Piclopedia, um, like what you can mess with enemies with. But there are some like sort of sorts of glitches that can happen in the Piclopedia because it's not like the their native habitat in the game, I guess you could say. Uh, like something with the water wraith and whatnot. Anyway, I should probably go to the Alamar's notes here. Uh, grub dog family. This large organism has the familiar mandibles and cranial morphology of the grub dog family, as well as the characteristic bulging eyes. As with most of the grub dogs, the creature's cranium co comprises half its total length and girth, showing a scar like that with the white spots. And la 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 la. Where's the? Uh, I, f I forgot. If which which one of these has something funny from Alamar? This Bulbar species boasts a garish color pattern with deep. What's going on with that Bulborb? It's like the the butterflies are are moving it <laughs> with deep orange body and black spots. The orange Bulborb's yellow bloodshot eyes make it clear that this scrub dog is excessively edgy and high strung, making it much easier to wake from deep sleep than other species in the Bulborb family. Yeah, the ones that went that they wake up when you get within throwing distance of them. Yeah! <laughs> uh, Harry Bulborb. Oh, wait, here we go. This is something not funny at all, I will say. Uh, Subspecies of the grub dog is a thick coat of soft white fur that obscures its abdominal markings. The fur also warms its vital organs, making this species well adapt to colder climates. However, its hair follicles are surprisingly fail, fr I mean frail, which can result in immediately immediate hair loss if the creature is surprised. Uh, Louise, remove all the bulbarbs hair, wrap the beast in foil along with a halved lemon and place it directly on the grill. The foil should protect the carcass from scorching, and the lemon will give the meat an elegant hint of citrus. Um, by the way, uh, see the scenery around here? Well, it's kind of hard to tell because it turned nighttime. The, the the time of day changes uh, while you're on here and whatnot. But you see the scenery? This is the perplexing pool. Well, depending on where you are on the map, uh, on the area selection here, you'll be able to see something a little bit... I mean, you'll be able to see the environment B said uh, area when you go into the Piclopedia. So you can actually see enemies in different environments that you wouldn't otherwise be able to see. Like, see, we are now in the Wistful Wild. Pretty neat, right? Um, let's see here. Uh, Bulborb larva. This meager creature is offered little meat, but its eyeballs are a local delicacy. Try them with orca and a dollop of sour cream. I mean, okra and a dollop of sour cream. What did I see? Oh, forget it. Mmm, delicious. Delicious carrots. What if I freeze them? Whoop, 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 why'd I do that? What if I freeze them? Will that instantly kill them once they uh, get unfrozen? Because they're really, really fragile enemies. Like, one HP or something will... No! Doesn't kill them. <laughs> 
Hollerer's notes. Uh, as the name implies, the creature used a bulbworm in its early stage of development. Its distinct bulbworm coloration has yet to appear, but it already exhibits other uniquely bulbworm characteristics. It is capable of hunting nourishment independently without the help of its parents immediately upon birth. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, shown there. Uh, this is interesting fun fact about the Bulbman. Not Louis, but this is just fun in general. Grind the meat and season with allspice, salt, and ground white pepper. Press the seasoned meat in, uh, into meat satchels and pan fry them with onions prior to serving. Smother, them, smother, smother the broths with Dijon mustard and sauerkraut. Buns are optional. Uh, okay, here we go. Parasiticus Pikminicus. This loathsome creature is in fact a parasitic form of Pikmin that has infected a bulb orb. Unlike Pikmin that nests in Pikmin onions, this parasitic relative spends its life inside the body of a host, usually a bulb orb. Juveniles fall in line and mimic the actions of the parent until maturing to full independence. By burying its root-like limbs into the nervous system of the host bulb orb and infusing it with natural hormone excretions, the bulbin is able to control virtually all the host's bodily functions. However, the host's voracious appetite seems impossible to suppress. <laughs> so, Baldman, infected by a Pikmin, basically, and that's why you're able to uh, get the babies under your control with a whistle. I guess Pikmin just love their whistles. Um, carefully remove every grain of sand, peel back the exoskeleton, and slurp heartily. <laughs> Uh, the beetles are always fun with Louie. Slice the meat into tender cutlets and vigorously apply a lime and pepper rod. Pan fry into lightly crusted, accompanied with water crust and drizzle with freshly prepared tarmarine, uh, tarmarine sauce. Okay, maybe that wasn't as good as I remember it. Um... <laughs> uh... Probably not, not much meat here. Since this creature's feather light skin in, uh, slice this creature's feather light skin into triangles, deep fry until crispy and sold generously. Makes the purpose perfect scooping chip to accompany fresh mango salsa. And what if I uh, wait? What? What? Uh, why do I keep doing that? Yeah, that's what I thought would happen. It would fall out of the air if I froze it. Uh, hang just creature on a rack and sun dry on a hot afternoon with suitably crisp grind the sun dried beast into powder. Makes a great substitute for cayenne or curry powder. <laughs> ah, Louie, you will eat anything. Well, most anything. An essential flavor accentuating ingredient in gumbo and jambalaya. Also delicious in soups, broths, and marinades. Mint beetle, this precious treat is exceptionally rare. I could sell it back home for a fortune. Then I could use the cash to upgrade my kitchen, buy galactic class ingredients, and even star my own cooking show. The insect gourmet, he truly is the king of bugs. And while wow, time is really going on by here, uh, maybe I should speed this up by dividing this up. Looking for a flavor that will surprise and delight your guests? This beast's aroma may surprise your guests, but it won't be delightful. <laughs> <laughs> the doodle bug. <laughs> and Olimar's is probably even uh, better than uh, um, Louis here. <clears throat> Philly, Flatcherum, Flintbug family. While life forms that excrete flower musks to warn of danger are not rare, the doodle bug is the only species known to release flatulence when active above ground. Interestingly enough, since it is merely releasing the gas created by decay of the contents of the creature's intestines, it does not have a special musk-producing organ. This means the creature is, in fact, merely flatulating. Special uh, analysis of the rank gas indicates that it contains not only methane, but hydrogen, sul hydrogen sulfide as well, making the flatulence gray 13 biohazard. <laughs> ah, Doodlebug, you are truly... The most destructive of all bugs. Well, smelly of all bugs. By the way, um, the yield sign that uh, that you see uh, over at the uh, the sites. Uh, let's see if we can get a good angle. Well, there's a letter E, but the yield the yield sign that you see at the very beginning of the wistful wild is actually a stop sign in the Japan version of the game. I I think it has to do with um sign shape differences if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong about that though uh let's see what else is funny around here uh how about you pull off the balloon like air sacs mince the meaty abdomen and shape it into small cakes pan sear the cakes until crusted but be careful not to overcook the delicate meats when ready to serve garnish the plate with vibrant air sacs even the most discerning dinner guests will be dazzled by the colorful presentation <laughs> Careening Dirigi Bug, Flotsilium Maximus, <laughs> Dirigi Bug family. The creature flows 
This creature floats effortlessly through, through the air using gas-filled balloons. Both its appearance and nature are antagonistic, and is the only variant of the species in this ecosystem. It is a really weird enemy. It may be a bit best to consider the po- why did you throw a bomb over there? The possibility that it somehow wandered into this ecosystem from an entirely alien one. Proof, positive proof, does not exist at this point. But that is how the creature is currently classified. Maybe you threw a bomb because, um, maybe, yeah, maybe because of the carrots that I threw around you. Thought they were Pikmin and tried to wipe them out. Um, Louie. Like a fine cheese, the aroma of this fluid floater can be oppressive, but this flare must be experienced to be believed. Also makes an unforgettable <laughs> non-dairy spread. <laughs> Vivid pink coloration is the most noticeable, noticeable character to this floating life form. This immigrant species is non-native to the region, having appeared to recently arrive on rune currents. Luminescent organ in its light attracts prey, which it then sucks up and consumes with its lower orifice. Unlike jellyfish, the jellyfish's tentacles do not have nemososis, so there's no danger in touching them. <coughs> Wait, what did I... Did I mispronounce... Uh, hold on. Nematosis. Nematosis... Okay, anyway, Louis notes. Uh, no, 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 wrong one, wrong one, there we go. A similar in taste and texture to gelatin, the jiggly mass of jelly can be sculptured into all kinds of creative shapes. As a bonus, it also doubles as a professional grade hair gel. <laughs> it's the perfect cool summer treat. That's the one I was looking for. <laughs> um, this native jelly full is indigenous to the region, unfortunately, is currently in danger. As its habitat is being overwhelmed by hostile immigrant species. Yeah, Alamar's notes don't usually tend to be funnier than Louis' notes because Louis' notes are, you know, recipes or s something about the various uses of said creature once you wipe it out. But, uh, like, let's say we go to Fiery Dweevil here. The search for a gourmet, high protein salad topping alternative to bacon bits is over! Grind this spicy Dweevil into tasty micro chunks and toss them generously over your salad to add instant flair and flavor. Because it's, you know, a Fiery Dweevil. Uh, and then we go to Olimar's, not as interesting. Members of the Dweevil family are over carrying objects of astounding size in their backs and mimicking them. The fiery Dweevil is one species in this family. Generally, this is a very gentle insect that feeds on grass nectar, as when faced with danger, the fiery Dweevil detects flammable internal gases, juts out its jaw, and spews scorching flames, as this clearly makes it a rather dangerous insect. It is best not to linger directly in front of it. Yep, see, not really as interesting as something like Louie's. Raw and old Dweedle makes for an unforgivable... Well, I mean, it's good for a fun fact, but... I mean, it's it's not as funny. <laughs> an unforgettable sushi treats, but if it's not prepared by an expert hand with ex exacting precision, precision, consumption could result in jolting electrical explosion of apocalyptic proportion! Zap up! Zap Yes! You must zap the pick pick carrots! Yeah, yeah. It doesn't seem to be interested in zapping the pick pick carrots. Maybe I can. Oops. Why do I keep doing that when I want to freeze it? Maybe I can freeze it and it'll get ornery and then zap them. <laughs> By the way, there's no way to like choose where the pick pick carrots are going. They just throw around randomly for the most part. If you didn't realize that. Um. Let's see the toady boyster. Pan sear with herbs and oil until lightly crusted on the outside and rosy on the inside. Complement the savory flavors with a light and buttery cream sauce. Mmm, species. Yeah, I'm trying to go here. Uh, go a little quicker here. Yep, still not as interesting. <laughs> uh. Hold on. Oh yeah, I didn't throw any Pikmin into the blue version of the cream, uh, of the candy pop buds. Well, you know where to find those, don't you? Okay. <laughs> uh, spicy flower combusts upon contact with the tongue. Keep fire retardant condiments within arm's reach. <laughs> Let's see if I can transform them into Pikmin. Ah, uh, it doesn't look like that's possible. Uh, no matter what color Pikmin is tossed into the blossom of this flower, it uh, into, into the bosom of this flower, it spits out the same number of red, red Pikmin seeds. The Pikmin, the candy pop flowers, and the Pikmin onion is not easily explained by current theories of the xenobotanical species, and thus have not yet been appropriately studied and classified. Man, as you can tell, I could be here at the Piclopedia all day. <laughs> Inedible. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's just go on a little faster here, I suppose. Uh, Emperor's Bulblax. 
for a sophisticated delicacy. Make a plate, divorce, grass. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm not good with French, clearly. From this massively obese creature, a creature's liver and spread it over a sesame cracker. Uh, grub dog family, initial observation to place, uh, place doubt on the capacity of the grub dog family to, to support a strong anti or be like social structure, but recent studies show the family is capable of such complexity. The egg sac of the largest female grub dog within a given range swells to dramatic proportions in response to environmental changes, such as the sudden depletion of prey, spray, prey species. These females temporarily take on the role of pack matriarch, also in pack formation, it has been observed. <laughs> it's so long! I should move on. <laughs> Good lord. Should I. Mm, I don't know. This just. I'd like to kind of do the bosses in a way, but at the same time, um, it, it would just take forever. By the way, this is the glitch on, uh, I took a little bit too long to do that, but the, the glitch for the water wraith there. Oh wait, no, I did it correctly. Uh, if you press the Z button to freeze it right away when it falls out of the sky, um, you'll be able to freeze its rollers and then, yeah, it, it's pretty interesting how that works. You can kind of like alternate, you know, I'll show that, show that again. Yeah, I'll just do this and see because you because the rollers come on screen first and then the water wraith. Uh, what happens is uh, I'm gonna do this one more time here and then zoom in so you can see it better. And I'm gonna freeze it. See that? Oh, oh, there we go. See the rollers because they hit the ground first. They're frozen, and this is if frozen first before the water wraith. And then they unfreeze, and then you can free freeze the rollers, and then you can yeah you can keep alternating between the two like this over and over again. This is one of the glitches of the Piclopedia. <laughs> anyway, let's check the notes. Inedible, known to cause mass hysteria, followed by leg spasms and internal thunderings. By the way, that's very suggestive at the upper right corner there. <laughs> Uh, all that is known about this creature stems from a few sightings deep underground. All reported sightings feature the same core set of details, a giant vicious form with a clear hazy sheen, not unlike a hard candy. One theory holds that it may be the ecto ectoplasmic incarnation of a kind of psychic phenomenon, but is usually the Marvels! <laughs> but as usually the case with such theories, it's very difficult to prove. All witnesses report being suddenly overcome with fear upon sighting the creature, approaching a state of panic and near insanity. In fact, every report contains an inordinate amount of extremely vague details, which has led to suspicions that exhaustion and fear may have caused some simple natural phenomenon to be viewed as a living creature. Yeah! Flatten the carrots! Yes! Do your job! Wow, you can really go far around this arena, can't you? Well, not arena, it's, it's more like um, the place, you know, with the onions and whatnot. Yeah, see, it's the, the yield sign. Anyway, let's move on here. Uh, let's see. Desert meets are all the rage. I mean, dessert meets are all the rage of Hakatate. When the planet's finest chefs hear about the kind of sorbets, pies, and parfaits you can make with the claw meat of this sweet beast, they'll clamor for every morsel we bring home. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This gigantic beast is wrapped in a hard shell. In a typical evolution, the right front leg of this creature is hypotrophic, taking on the function of an arm rather than a leg. Its asymmetric physical development is, un is unique to in the natural world. Well, an unlucky exploration <clears throat> explorer's incorrect conclusion is that this creature. Ah, that this creature adheres to a pattern of peaceful, quiet behavior led to an unfortunate incident. In fact, this beast exhibits intensely hostile, aggressive tendencies, aiming at prey and ramming them at full speed. No joke. Uh, let's see, I guess I'll do these last two. Neither boiling nor baking can diminish this creature's overpowering musky scent, only suitable for serving to unpleasant in-laws. <laughs> Uh, raging line. Arachnorbs boast a wondrous biological composition with a silicone based exoskeleton. Wait, silicon. Wait, yeah, silicone. What am I thinking? Base. I'm going crazy from all this reading. And inner it's coated with malleable heavy metals. However, much about these creatures remains a mystery, as specimens regularly explode when they are dissected. These explosions produce scorching flames that completely melt all internal organs, leaving us with a disappointing lack of information on the inner workings of the species. We must await the development of a new dissection process and more specialized research before we can better understand this enigmatic creature. However, the following observation notes have been recorded appears to be leveling terrain for some unknown purpose. <laughs> Location of eyes and ears are not really readily apparent. Freezing a specimen may yield new research opportunities. 
Uh, oh, I forgot man at legs. Here we go. Yeah, let's get it out of the ground here. Although the meat is a bit on the metallic side, the oil makes a mouthwatering gravy or lubricated <laughs> vinaigrette. Um, meat? What, what are they talking about, meat? Isn't it a... Isn't it a machine? Well, no. If you look at it closely, it looks like it has the body of a regular um, BD long legs. If you go to Olimar, you're going to get a good fun fact about this to clarify that. Um, the species of the arachnoid family fuses with machinery at a crucial point in the mat maturation, uh, maturation mm -hmm. process, giving it the ability to fire energy bursts from the launcher beneath its orbital torso. However, the man at legs itself is not in control of this weapon. Instead, the mechanical portions of its structure appear to automatically acquire and attack targets. The man at legs has a gentle disposition. And as a member of the arachnoid species, it has no natural enemies. It is particularly difficult to understand why this species would develop such awesome offensive capabilities, leading to rumors of... Um, what are you firing at? There's nothing to fire at. Well, maybe those carrots didn't dissolve yet. Uh, leading to rumors among the scientific community that was the machinery that approached the arachnoid and pr proposed a symbiotic relationship. Interesting, no? Um, anyway, let's do one more here. Titan the Evil. Eaten raw, this predator's luxurious legs are bold and full flavored. What a satisfying crunch. <laughs> and, oh, so sad that it doesn't have its weapons of death. Titan, largest member of the Dweevil family. This fearsome predator carries protective components that frequently exhibit offensive capabilities and evolution to be attributed to mere chance. Another evolutionary theory is that the chemical content, uh, contents of the containers carried by Titan Dweevils contribute to possible gene splicing, while other, other Dweevils do not seem to choose the objects they carry. This Titan Dweevil appears to prefer shiny ob objects above all others. And now, because I'm running out of space for said video file for my voice, file, I am going to do a little cut and head over to the uh, treasure hoard next by hitting the R button, or the L button, that works too. Alright, I'm here another day because I had to charge a camera. <laughs> um, this is uh, something that I didn't anticipate either with me using a save file off of a memory card that had already had a complete thing. See, each of these segments has its own set name, basically. Like, see, these are all in green, and these are all in blue, these are all in green, etc., etc., all the way down to the bottom. They're all individual sets, and they all have their own individual names. I guess it's not that big of a deal, since you'll be able to see what their names are when you play through the game, but still, something that I did not anticipate. <laughs> um, you have two ways to check things here, the sales pitch from the ship, or Olimar's Journal. Let's start with Olimar's Journal for this, just for kicks. What a perplexing plant. It appears to be carrying two different types of berries. They must be rare species of fruit. Both have odd traits. One seems to be a suppressant, or the other an other is a stimulant. It's not easy to tell which is which. I better be careful with them. I should also warn Louis, or else he may try to bake these berries into a pie. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just like the uh, uh, Piclopedia, you can zoom around, check things out, and yeah, you get what I'm saying here. You know how things work at said uh, treasure places. It's the equivalent of the Piclopedia, except for treasures, yeah. <laughs> Only you can't freeze treasures with the Z button or anything like that. Of course, because they're not really enemies or anything like that. <laughs> oh, the sales pitch. Fate's tapestry has unraveled. Tomorrow weeps. Romance has fallen. Love is madness. To mend the rift between two cross lovers, this is the ultimate weapon in Cupid's arsenal. <laughs> Obviously, um, the ships are just like Louis in that they're more humorous than informative. So, yeah. Um, since there's 201 of these bad boys, I don't know if I should show them all. No, I'm not going to. <laughs> it's just way too many. You'll be able to check them out when you play yourself. Um, let's see here. Which ones do I like the most? I think this one. Fruits cannot be judged by their outer coverings, no matter how hairy. This one is quite yummy, and it's times like this that make me wish I were equipped with advanced taste capabilities. Remember, this is the one that had the ugly outside... Um, See, see disguised del delicacy in the name um, that the ship gave it during the game and whatnot. So yeah, hence the hairiness comment there. 
Uh, fruit on this planet is astonishingly large. If we could cultivate these ample fruits on Hakatate, no one would ever go hungry again. I think you're going to turn more into a freight company. I mean, more into a food provider company than a freight company, excuse me. Sadly, I don't know anything about agriculture. Maybe I should have listened to my wife when she told me to do yard work. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Spiny alien treat. Delicious fried or baked. This is an invitation for your taste buds to the world of natural delights. As a superior as I am, I must leave recipe recommendations to others. Machines are bad liars. <laughs> uh, Alamar. The Valley of Repose is blanketed with a layer of snow. Despite this, here and there, plants are sprouting out of the snow. I don't know how much longer the snow will last. It seems like it's getting warmer each day. I wish our frosty financial predicament would warm up a bit. <laughs> Uh, how about, where is, yeah, the anti-hiccup fungus. One minor the surprisingly earthy flavor will send your hiccups packing. Other individuals with a history of heart condition should devour this with caution. <laughs> what a shocking taste. I suppose young people like Louie might find it tasty, but the flavor is too intense for me. So this is some uh, mushroom here. Uh, science project. <laughs> the perfect plan for extra credit research for a Hakatate elementary pupil science fair. So now they're sponsoring schools or something? Wow, they're really branching out. You can mean that they had to rely on, with <clears throat> on to help with homework as long as you possess this beauty. <laughs> I'll take I'll, <clears throat> I'll take this plan to my boy as a souvenir for my grand expedition. It'll make the perfect topic for his science fair project. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, should, I should press the B button rather than pressing A, but whatever. Uh, Conifer Spire. Life is full, but short. In this, uh, in, is this one of the short-lived life forms that changes shape as it ages? No, it's part of another tree. I'll oh, forget it, they wouldn't know. Even though it has dried out, it has not lost its unique charm. I've paid off all the company's debt, but I find myself returning to this planet yet again. This time, I must find and rescue Louis. I've been scouring the wilderness we landed on, and I scour this region. I can't help but feel lonely for my faithful sidekick, even if he does not eat. Even if he does eat all the ship's onboard snacks. Because of my loneliness, I have dubbed this rough region the Wistful Wild. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't press B again, dang it. Uh, hideous victoral. The consistency of the half-cooked yolk says, Mmm, good. It is packed with nutrients, too. I can sell it, but I have never eaten it. I am unable to eat it. Not even a nibble. Poor ship. We struggle with a titanic bread bug for this treasure. <laughs> we finally prevailed. That huge creature had a habit of dragging away treasures and hoarding them in its den. I wonder if there's a way to use these creatures to aid my treasure-seeking mission. On second thought, that's a bad idea. Pikmin are the only creatures I can really rely on. <laughs> uh, speaking of the bread bug, did I check that out in the Piclopedia? I don't think I did. It would be one of the bosses, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, okay, because it's technically a boss, even though it doesn't attack Pikmin at all. <laughs> Although cooking this colossal beast yields a mountain of meat, every ounce of it is flavorless. Only suitable for intergalactic all-you-can-eat buffets. <laughs> uh, let's see here. This gargantuan species of the greater breadbug family has a torso so perfectly square that it almost seems like it was formed in a mold. For a brief period after birth, the giant breadbug cup... Com competes for food with smaller bed bugs, but upon reaching maturity, it seeks out much larger prey. This is the primary reason that the two species with similar feeding habits can coexist in the same habitat. Hordes of Pikmin appear to pose the only plausible threat to this massive creature's life. Yes, the bread bug. Incredible. <laughs> okay, I'm done here. Uh, let's go back into the treasures. Because let's see here, Alamar Alamar Knight's shell, a fossil of an ancient shear inhabited. It is most desirable despite its unappealing, <coughs> unappealing name. <laughs> Captain Alamar named it without consulting anyone. He could have at least named it after his faithful spaceship. <laughs> this fossil was dug up deep underneath the Awakening Wood. Given its shape and morphology, I su I suspect that it's some kind of prehistoric sea creature. If so, it's feasible to say that the whole region was once situated on the ocean floor. Perhaps, perhaps. Wait, where was the egg? Like, where did I leave off? Oh, I must have started, like, 
back over here, because, yeah, whatever. Uh, I guess taste sensation. In this modern world of artificial foods, all things taste the same. Despite your dare taste tongue buds, if that describes you, then this is for you. Its flavor is the balm to heal your wounded soul. Some things on this world cannot be understood, no matter how much I analyze them. For instance, this is the first time I've tasted this, yet it has a nostalgic taste. It's inexplicable! It tastes like something my mom has made for me by hand. Oh, look at its beauty. How did it survive after all this time of humans being extinct? Because this is clearly a human d uh, invention of food, I guess you could call it. <laughs> I don't know, but I probably shouldn't question the game logic. Ah, oh, cookies. The spiral cookies, I guess. Is your plate conservator adventuresome? In a way, this taste will ravage your mouth. For those who savor flavor, this new delicacy will have you questioning your ideas of taste. Mm, not all interesting like I thought it would be. Uh, it is hard. Really hard. Too hard. So hard that you're not sure you can eat it, even though you must. This hard snack is infused with the essence of stubbornness, and you are powerless. To resist it. Oh, I didn't check Alamar's for this one. My spacesuit's filter seems to be malfunctioning. It can't suppress the sweet, syrupy smell per pervading this cavern. If I don't find a way to neutralize it fast, it's going to drive me to spoil my diet. <laughs> As I grow older, I've observed that being a crankier, that I'm becoming crankier today. I flew off the hand. <clears throat> oh, I'm becoming crankier. Period. Today, I flew off the handle over a trifling matter. If I feel like such a fool, I must learn to control my cantankerous temper. I can't allow my bad a attitude to erode my teamwork on this vital mission. Yes, you must. Uh, those two cookies weren't as ex uh, exciting as I thought. Let's see. Enamel Buster. Behold, a magical candy to make the children of Hakate weep with uncontrollable cravings. Pure, undeniable sweetness. Unavoidable tooth decay. Who cares? Enjoy the here and now. <laughs> Isn't that how all snackers feel? If we, hold, if we sold a snack like this on Hakate, everyone would get addicted to it. I should probably feel bad about making everyone on my planet fat, but as the ship is always saying, business is business. <laughs> uh, diet Doomer. Alas, the machines know nothing of eating. The ultimate pleasure. If only I had a mouth. <laughs> My ship cannot analyze taste, so I've taken that burden upon myself. Burden? Really? It is a rough job, but up to the captain to step up and volunteer for the most grueling duties. Mmm, tastes good. I could eat this treat endlessly. I better test that hypothesis. <laughs> yeah, wow, all these sweet treats are down below here are good, aren't they? Uh, pale passion. Yes, this will save our loveless age. Yes, it is a romance-filled addiction to the Sweet Tooth series. The sweet aroma will attract members of the opposite gender. Mm, when I was just a young lad, I looked everywhere for love. I guess that's why I smile when I see young people laughing together. Mm, well, I guess I wasn't that good overall, but I think uh, the treasures are much more entertaining overall than the enemies, at least on the Olimar side. Uh, but it's like you got the good side of the ship, and then you got the possibly good side of the Alamar side, or even better side of the Alamar side, or, you know, vice versa with the ship and whatnot. But with uh, the enemies, it seems like that it's more uh, geared towards Louis being entertaining than Alamar, as Alamar is more like a National Geographic documentary on watching some animal species or something. <laughs> uh, chocolate Cushion. A sweet tooth stream! Is this real or am I dreaming? If I had teeth, I'd be nibbling with vigor. <laughs> if someone crossed this object in a cave that reek of putrid odor. My suit allowed me to breathe freely, but it couldn't filter out the overpowering stench. The worst part is, I smell it all the time now. My sense of taste will never be the same. The ship cannot analyze taste, so I guess I'll have to do my best. <laughs> Uh, sweet dreamer, a company not too sugary bed. Young stars who sleep here will have the sweetest of dreams. I've toiled long and hard to collect all these tasty treats. Surely it won't matter if I bring one back to my daughter as a souvenir. She loves snacks. But I thought it's supposed to be a bed. Well, I guess Alomar sees it differently. <laughs> Confection hoop. <laughs> the sugary delight has even the sheen like me wishing to partake in its deliciousness. What a sweet looking circlet. Too bad this ship can't eat. The hole we searched today was filled with a saccharine of scent. Uh, so just sniffing, uh, sniffing it put me at a risk of developing a cavity. <laughs> uh, I don't think I can eat anything sweet for a while. Wait, who am I kidding? 
Dig in, Olimar. Dig in, pastry wheel. <laughs> this is perfect for the kitties. A small, well-formed ring of sugar. Go on, gulp it down. Some people in this world can't eat, can eat anything and never get fat. It makes me so jealous. I eat a cookie crumb and suddenly I'm saddled with a buffer of blubber. To make matters worse, my wife and daughter are always scrutinizing my diet. Can't a man enjoy a pastry wheel in peace? Nah, not once you get married. There's no peace. <laughs> um, hmm, uh, how about mm, eh, this? But this is the Natural History Museum, and watch the visitors line up waving money. This giant statue was found on Savage Planet and comes with its own rumored curse. Does it really come live under a full moon? Own it, they find out. <laughs> The dead beast, this dead beast is, has the form of an animal, and it is encased in an organic compound. I have concluded that it is a groundbreaking biological discovery. The ship says it's nothing more than a wooden statue. I wish it had more of an imagination. No, then it would probably talk even more than it does now. That would be bad. <laughs> I think Alamar Al here has a better idea of what it is than the ship does. <laughs> All right, let's uh, all my right shell. Wait, I, oh wait, am I? Have I looped around? Hold on a sec. Uh, um, yeah, I did. How what? How did I loop around? Wait, what? I'm, I'm befuddled. Where is the? Oh, okay. What, what, did I start going up and set it down? How did I? I don't know. I'm confusing myself here. <laughs> oh wait, oh wait, that's right. I went up here to start. Uh, continue on where I left off, and then I continued. I mean, then I came back down here. Oh, okay. I'm just being stupid here. Just been going on for a while here. Crystal King. Collectors of the rare ones assemble. This is a one of a kind specimen of a unique crystal life form. Proof. True collectors need no proof. This romantic piece could be yours today. <laughs> At first glance, this may look just like a. <clears throat> this may look like just a pebble, but it's actually a crystallized life form. It is? Okay, so I don't have any proof, but it is still exciting scientific discovery. <laughs> um, how about gyroid bust? This looks exactly like the gyroids that have become so popular on planet Hakatate. It is its pitiful expression is beloved by the Hakatate youth. <laughs> My son tells me that this type of figure. I'm uh, wrong voice. My son tells me that this type of figurine is all the rage with the kids. The strangest things amuse kids. When I was a kid, we were lucky if we were allowed to even talk about figurines. P.S. When I found this figurine, it had been placed so that it was protected by a wall of flame. My research isn't complete, but I think it may have been a shrine of some kind. Perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, unknown merit. Decades of toil with nose to the grindstone, insulting others swallow without a hiccup. Such is the life of a salaried man. His name will not be remembered. His family will not understand, but if the results bear out these efforts, that is enough. Now, nose to the grindstone, drone! <laughs> Detailed analysis has revealed that this artifact is extremely ancient. It is obviously an important archaeological discovery, but the salesman in me is more interested in, in its monetary value. Maybe I'll get the best of both worlds by selling it to a museum. <laughs> such radiance, such shine, like magic, this product stimulates greed in all, in all intelligent life forms. Bring your wallets and gather around buyers. <laughs> Having auctions now. This rare alien metal doesn't exist on Hakatate. When I gaze at it, I'm gripped with an overpower, over, yeah, overpowering sense of greed. On Hakatate, there is a valuable metal with a stunning sheen that has a similar effect. Perhaps this luring metal is responsible for many of this planet's woes. Probably is. Probably is. Money is the greatest evil. <laughs> All reason flies in the face of this sparkle. It's not flashy, but it still in inspires avarice. <laughs> Talking to the boss makes me crave the power in order to, pe to order people around. He just sits on his haunch all day, barking out wildly irrational requests. Ah! When will it be my turn to be the boss? <laughs> I guess when they're on the planet and the boss is in trouble, Nalmar has to save him. I don't know. <laughs> uh, milk tub. Others throughout the universe, take note. If your family dislikes your manly odor, this is for you. Fill your tub with the rich aroma of milk and suck your stench away. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be stingy now. Think of the children. <laughs> it seems like there's no so shortage of daughters that think their fathers stink. <laughs> no, I've never had that problem, but it must be hard on those poor fathers. I shouldn't take advantage of it. I'm sure that stink epidemic increases the value of this treasure. Smelly fathers could take a dip in this portable milk pool, and their daughters would adore them for their farm fresh scent. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, this is the thing I didn't know what it was. Behold the heavenly sparkle of this, one of the three sacred treasures of Samaduchi! <laughs> now you can hold the artifact of endless food and drink. Of course, to tongueless machines such as me. This is all completely meaningless. <laughs> this chrome throw <clears throat> this chrome trowel has a very strange shape. It's bent and smooth, except for a sharp prong at the end of it. The ship insists that it's one of the three shake it treasures of Samadouche, but I, I think it's just the kitchen sink. <laughs> <laughs> is it really? It doesn't really look like... Uh, I don't know, it looks more like a pan or a ladle or something. More than anything. Who knows? Who knows? There's this flimsy piece of scrap metal out! Working garbage just by now become a work of art. <laughs> the area recently uh, touched down is blanketed with a fresh layer of frozen precipitation snow. As tranquil as rela and relaxing as it is, I named it the Valley of Repose. Using Pikmin to move obstacles, I was able to open some new areas of to, explore to exploration where I found this hunk of metal. Uh, merciless extractor for the uh, juicer. Squeeze, squeeze, had enough squeeze! <laughs> A ruthless savage heart in machine form. No giant fruit can retain its juice in the face of this relentless ringing device. If you are greedy, down to the last drop, this is for you. <laughs> when I look at this, the president, I can see myself climbing the corporate ladder. To be a manager, you've got to be an inhuman, heartless villain. <laughs> this trade allows them to flog their dedicated workers without mercy and still sleep at night. I feel that same merciless cruelty radiating from this uh, metallic altar. I wonder if it was once used for dark, unspeakable ceremonies, or perhaps it was once the desk of a corporate boss. We'll never know. <laughs> Uh, decorative goo. Everyone enjoys decorating in favorite hues, but it is vital to utilize new colors now and then. This tube of goo will surely help you discover a new you, and perhaps Bob Ross's palette. <laughs> or, I mean, find its way onto Bob Ross's palette. What am I saying there? I'll forget it. With the assistance of the blue pick one, we fall in the canister of paint today. I used it to give the ship a fresh coat of paint, but did it thank me? No! <laughs> As a space pilot, I've always treated my ship like a trusted companion, even if it's a smart aleck. Yet that snobbish ship has the gall to complain about the color. There's no pleasing it. Forget this. I'm going to bed. <laughs> I guess it went back to red or perhaps changed to gold after it got gooed up. Uh, master's instrument. No artistic inclinations, no color sense, no worries! This no-hassle art implement was found on a primitive planet. From this day forward, you can be an artist of the ages. I found this object squirreled away in an underground complex. Some of these structures demonstrate a high degree of culture. I surmise that each building must have been designed by an artist of great renown. This pink painting rod reinforces my hunch that this civilization, appreci civilization appreciated fine art. That is true. Uh, manual honing? This is a no lazy machine that runs out of power. This point honing marl works anywhere, anytime. The manual operation may tire you up, the exercise will do you good. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, it it runs out of power, but I don't think a pencil sharpener ever needed power to begin with. I mean, there are electric pencil sharpeners, but this isn't the kind of pencil sharpener that ever used power. But yeah, they are pretty tiring on the hands. <laughs> the size of this construction rig is astonishing. They could build an entire house in minutes. <laughs> the strangest part of that, I don't see any electrical plug on it. Anywhere. Surely you don't have to power it manually. I'm afraid you do. I'm afraid you do. I guess they just don't know about uh, the ancient wonders of our civilization. <laughs> um, this clam like sound generator is all natural. The purity of its percussive tone is irresistible. Clack, clack! <laughs> my taste in music is highly refined. My wife and kids have no taste at all. For example, when I ask my family if they want to go out to, for karaoke, they twist their faces and give me a nasty look. They don't know what they're missing. <laughs> uh, man, there's so many good treasures! The most powerful magnetic force in the universe! The healing properties of magnetic fields relieve backaches, headaches, toothaches, and even dreaded spleen aches. <laughs> I've had an um I've had an unpleasant stomach today. I'm not old yet, but I'm not young anymore either. Maybe I should start doing a better job of looking after my health. Perhaps basking in this contraption's magnetic rays will make me stronger. Perhaps. Like a superhero. Uh, implement of toil. <laughs> the pencil. Or me. What was me? So much work. Any me. 
Boo hoo. Uh, these phrases all. These phrases fill one with a sense of sadness. They are all evoked by this mysterious charm. You work so hard. I think I could use some rest and relaxation. However, looking at all the valuable treasures you've collected, I think we'll make up a huge fortune. Then I can hire an army of butlers to attend my every whim. <laughs> Uh, as you can tell, um, the pencil definitely could fit in said pencil sharpener, but at the same time, when you think about it, since they're super tiny, how would they have the strength to be able to constantly sharpen pencils of this size in this thing? I mean, it tires out human fingers, let alone a tiny human, like, alien-like thing, and yeah, perhaps they're better off just putting it in a museum or something. <laughs> uh, Director of Destiny? This amazing fortune-telling device follows the flow of fate with eerily with eerie accuracy. It calculates the magnetic fields of planets, stars, and living organisms to track the pulse of density itself. If you're an optimist who feels like life points both south and north, this is for you. <laughs> uh, with the help of my Pikmin, I've been able to widen the radius of my salvage search. The new areas that have opened up to exploration are far more dangerous. Just to be safe, I better review Pikmin traits and characteristics. <laughs> little tutorial integra integrated in that because it's a fairly early game item. Uh, ah, I was looking for this. Flame of Tomorrow, the matches with the Bowser face on them. Is this the flame of hope that spawned humanoid civilization? Architate new needs new energy sources, and this could be a fine candidate. Will machines like me be powered by this someday? Maybe. Maybe. From the beginning of time, many people have searched for a perfectly clean, endlessly renewable energy source. Unfortunately, we've never found anything close to it. Rubbing these two objects together seem to produce fire. Maybe this is the long-lost energy source you've always been searching for. But anyway, yeah, see? Bowser face on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Remember that match in the box also uh, rolls around on the treasure screen? Not here, though. Not here. Oh, so sad. But if you'd like to order some, call what one five 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 troopas. Behemoth jaw. Is this part of our previously unknown giant life form? What might the entire beast look like? Let your imagination, <laughs> imagination unrile and create the largest of all living beings in your hand in your head. Imagination. Why did I keep mispronouncing that? I don't know. I'm getting kind of stuffy here. <laughs> I can't com conceive of how a creature with teeth this big can have ever lived. Emperor Bulblax, that bloated meat whale, is the only creature I've seen even half that size. The only thing I could do to hope is I ever, it, I never encounter something that massive. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, be satisfied with the decorative outer shell of this rectangle. It is more endearing since you can't see what's inside. Not being able to open it makes it all the more special. In reality, it is empty. <laughs> Today we ventured across the plains to reach a cold cavern. I've been meaning to splunk. The Pikmin have had a hard time coping with the bitter cold, but they are real troopers. Somehow they summoned the strength to carry this box, so I hope it's full of treasure. treasure. The ship knows better than that. Ah, <laughs> uh, mirrored stage. Come rain, wind, or typhoon, the stage will always support the hidden singer deep in your soul. <laughs> it is a lovely instant dance stage. How about taking on one on tour with you, Star of Rock? <laughs> Every day it is nothing but work, work, work. Some sometimes I need to just get off, get it off my mind. So I set this thing up as a stage and taught the Pikmin a song and dance routine. Red, purple, white, yellow, and blue Pikmin danced in perfect unison and sang their little hearts out. I wonder if this is a hint to that little Easter egg of the song that they play when you have 20 of each color. When I return home, I should take up a career as a dance instructor. <laughs> um, candle. On the surface, this is not art. It is a temporary spectacle compared to the glory of eternity. And yet, that is why it is art. Machines like me are incapable of comprehending this. <laughs> Some works of fine art are timeless, while others are fleeting. Once lit, the sculptured pillar of wax will burn with glory for a short time before flaming out. The purpose of this piece of art is to help us all envision our final moment of flaming glory. Uh, there's a lot more treasures that are good than I thought in here. Oh, wow. I'm thinking of just skipping on ahead here. <laughs> Going to bed early is a waste of time for a lively soul. This dream maker makes a night fun. Fine. So it is broken. It does not work. That is a drawback. Come on, use your imagination. No, I wanted to play it. <laughs> At night, I have nothing to do to keep me occupied. I've been searching for something dull to blow the bottom, but every time I find something I want to play with, it's broken. This object is a great example. It looks fascinating, but I can't get it to function. 
guess all I have to do is write it in this journal. Poor Game & Watch. Poor Game & Watch. <laughs> all worldly matters from time, to ta from time to start to its end are said to be recorded in this historical vault. It is so huge, decoding it all is impossible. Its mere existence is said to make one philosophical. <laughs> Famicom disc. Uh, Glee Spinner. It produces a mysterious shape induced mental effect of, in all living creatures. You simply must rotate it. Spin, 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 spin. What fun it must be. <laughs> when I get near this captivating treasure, I can't stop myself from spinning it over and over again. I shouldn't spin some val such valuable treasure, but it is so hard to have self control. From now on, instead of actually spinning it, I'll just imagine it. I'm doing it instead. Wow, this is so much fun. <laughs> oh, by the way, um, these right here aren't the um, uh, spinny things for Rob that I thought, you know, the, the gyro spin things. These are actually uh, for a game called Stacker. So, yeah, I made a mistake there back uh, when I did that uh, part for them, or the parts for them. This relic rolls directly from the sands of time. It shakes and shape invokes waves of sweet nostalgia. Middle-aged men throughout the universe harken back to the days of their youth and grin. <laughs> no joke there. They pass on their taste to the next generation, filling them with an adventure with adventure and romance. I can't believe I had the fortune to find this thing buried underground. It looks like a component of huge mechanical doll. It looks just like a part from a robot in a cartoon I used to watch as a kid. How nostalgic. This futuristic machine makes me feel like I've traveled back in time. Uh, maybe I should just move on here. Oh my god, there's still so much more. Let's just do the Titan the Evil Ones and end it off, okay? Okay. <laughs> and then this nanotech gathers the negative ions in the atmosphere and converts them into energy. It then releases that energy. Zap! Use it to relieve muscle soreness and joint stress. One warning, however, it does not render the use user unconscious. <laughs> I think that's a good thing, isn't it? Uh, maybe I should check the key too. Shape. I've encountered that somewhere before. No, I must be mistaken. Yes, I am mistaken. Thoughts like this strike all who see this cabalistic form. You can feel its immense power. Sidon came from the personal treasure hoard of a massive Pikmin devouring spider. The whole cave was crawling with all kinds of fearsome creatures. Wait, did he say Pikmin devouring spider? It came from beady long legs, and they don't eat Pikmin as far as I know, or have mouths as far as I know. Wait, how do they eat anyway? Maybe they, maybe that's why they stomp Pikmin. They squish them down, they, their mouths are on their feet or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> the whole cave was crawling with all kinds of uh, fearsome creatures. I decided to name that eerie cave the Citadel of Spiders. The ship can't stand bugs. Whenever I ask at the store a specimen for salvage, it threatens to stage a mutiny. <laughs> and now let's go back to here for Olimar's. The Shocker is one of the several weapons wielded by the nightmarish Titan Dweevil. It allowed the creature to smite Pikmin with zaps of lightning, except the yellows. <laughs> and that's how it fell. Flare Cannon. In the compressed air cylinder of this flamethrower, liquid gas is lit, producing the fire that gives the weapon its name. It is very dangerous, and good kids know not to play with it. In case you wonder, it cannot be used as a substitute for a spaceship's rockets, and should never be used to cook sausages. Never. <laughs> This scorching mechanism was once used by a monstrous titan weevil. The roasting apparatus spews hot jets of flame. I can't keep Bluey away from it. He keeps trying to use it to cook sausages and caramelize creme brulee. <laughs> a comedy bomb. You cannot see it. You cannot smell it. Yet this weapon would steal your life, given the chance. At least it used to. Until I shrewdly exchanged its poison gas for hilarious laughing gas. <laughs> Crafted with an eye for safety, it is the funniest weapon ever devised! <laughs> His fiendish component was used by the Titan Dweevil. Although it was once a primitive chemical weapon, it is now a weapon of mass hilarity. <laughs> His item automatically detects subterranean waterways, even if the water is buried a mile deep. This monster pump draws liquid it uh, draws liquid any distance. Its almost uncontrollable power is fantastic! A savage water pump was just one of many weapons wielded by the Titan Dweevil, and the most devastating one. <laughs> this pump is capable of spraying jets of hyper-pressurized water all around the room and giving you trouble all over the place. Uh, let's do uh, ships first. A new employee of Hakate Freight, Louis is often silent. No one knows what thoughts lurk in his mind. He appears to operate on the same wavelength as insects, often with dangerous results. After he was kidnapped, he somehow managed to hijack the colossal insect's brain. Now, I don't really believe that, because as you've seen, the Titan's Weevil function just fine without Louie. 
Although, you know, he, he didn't have weapons or anything like that, but still, he was able to function just fine and, and had all the boss music and whatnot. So, yeah, well, I don't know, maybe it's... Well, let's see Olimar's first. Louis is back! Somehow, he survived a horrific deal, or deal with a freakishly large weapon-wielding titan dweevil! I entered the hole with an army of ferocious Pikmin, grimly determined to save Louis from the titan dweevil, but it seems that he was perfectly fine all along. I can't understand how he managed to avoid being eaten. Hmm, he always had an unusually close, conne close connection with bugs. Also, the titan dweevil can't really eat, so maybe that's why. <laughs> and I know he loves to cook them. Maybe he wasn't kidnapped after all. Could he have been con controlling that beast all along? No, it's craziness. Although he d does insist now that we address him by his proper title, the King of Bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so yeah, there's so, so many treasures in the game that I could go through, but I burn enough of your time, I think, and you've probably left by now. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to end off the part here and let you check out the stuff all for yourself. Well, you know what, I'll do the two chapsticks last and that's it. Uh, Chapstick and Carmex, excuse me. I must have a medical item for explorers. If you need powerful results, this is for you. It even comes with a testimonial from our employees. Use this and fear nothing ever again. <laughs> in a survival situation, the most important things are water, courage, and a first aid kit. I've got water and an endless supply of courage, but I don't have a first aid kit. Sometimes I don't have a whole lot of motivation either. <laughs> I might be a daring explorer, but sometimes I just want to loaf around all day and sleep. Wait, what if the president reads this journal? <coughs> um, I've never dreamed of slacking on the jaw. Yeah! <laughs> a dependable item in crucial times. Stay safe by keeping one at home and at the office. It is indispensable. If you are in, if you are health conscious, buy this. I'm shocked. I can't believe this is the only stock of medical supplies we've got. If one of us are to get ill or injured, we'll be in, we'd be in serious trouble. We'll have to be sure to watch our step and always wash our hands. We could also search the medicine uh, <clears throat> among the treasures we've collected. All right, I'm beat. My voice, too much reading, exhaustion. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part when we start the challenge mode. Yeah.